me. If if not, um, please uh, let us know. Uh, and uh, yeah, I'll just uh, go through a few housekeeping items here. Uh, you see at the bottom of the screen these buttons, and I just want to highlight. Uh, first of all, you can uh, enlarge uh, the windows on the top right-hand corner. And the most important one I want to highlight here is the Q&A button. So there you can uh, type in at any time questions you might have on the content. And if you have any problems, technical problems, or you can't hear, please also you, you can type into that Q&A box. We can see that and monitor that throughout. Uh, we'll have a Q&A session at the end, so we will not answer uh, questions during the webinar unless it's very simple questions and one of us is not speaking, then they might answer um, or we keep it to the end uh, for the Q&A session. And uh, yeah, so the uh, other, yeah, the other buttons are pretty self-explanatory. Helpful tips just to highlight here that this is quite bandwidth intensive. So what I always recommend is switch off anything that might be talking or doing something over the web, including, you know, like folders or, or email or any of that. I just keep my browser open. And yeah, so this should work on Chrome, Edge, uh, iPad and Android devices. And uh, yeah, um, Internet Explorer is a is a problem. So sometimes I'm not sure if every time uh, yeah, that's that's that. Um, you can get a certificate of the participation, and for that, it's required to go to the Learn server and log in and create your profile, which is free of charge. And you can also actually then get other materials, learning materials from there. And after you've signed in, uh, you can ha you can see your own learning history. And from there, you can then uh, print out or, or generate a PDF or something like that um, for the certificate of participation. Ping. Now let's go to the, the content. So... Today, this is the second of a series of three webinars uh, around the subject of water and wastewater. Last week, we had a, a webinar that was uh, focused around the, it was an introduction also focused around the wastewater process plant. Unfortunately, there was a technical problem with some browsers. So in case you missed that, uh, I think we emailed everybody the, the link to, to the new recording. We then uploaded the recording. Um, so if you have, haven't have seen that, um, please get back to us. And yeah, so this the second webinar is focused around the network, so the sewage network, uh, hydrology, and the civils aspect, basically. And the third one will be uh, around construction, uh, particularly for contractors. That, that will be next week. Today is uh, myself speaking, and uh, I operate out of Singapore. I'm responsible for the ASEAN area. And with me here is Kartik uh, Sundarasan, and he, he is based in Delhi. And um, typically, uh, he, he's responsible for India, but uh, we, we help each other. And uh, yeah, so um, he, he would also assist us in, in this region. Coming back to uh, yeah, so the subdivision of of the waste water wastewater in in these two parts. This is the second part. The first part was on the plant, and and this part we're covering today is around every, anything to do with the network. So the the water distribution network, as well as the wastewater wet network, as well as anything to do with uh, um, to do with with flood and. Uh, and flood regulation, um, uh, water re um, retention, storm ponds, and and the like. 
So here, uh, sort of some review of the different solutions that that we have in there, starting from the the ground condition at early stages, survey ground uh, investigation, and and then the the, the surface surveying. Uh, then we have buildings and and preliminary design stages. We we then go go through to the um, hydrology. I put here in the center because that might be um, the design of the hydraulic network is something that would take some of the survey data and and then you design the the specification of the sizes and so on, which Kartik will cover in more detail. Then the the concept and detailed design stages, we we then in a sort of BIM world or something that is like BIM, uh, where where we can link together also the uh, models, the geotechnical and typography models that can be then amended and adjusted, cut and fill and so on. Uh, we, we can do clash detection against, um, why is my slide jumping? cut and fill and so on. And then, um, yeah, we get all, all the way along. What we can also get is is the, sorry, I just see my slider jumping. Um, we can get all the way along. We can get uh, quantities from the design. Yeah, so the, the hydrology and then here on, on the right hand side, uh, we, we have the, the design review where different models are overlaid. We can do things like clash detection and that could then have an impact on the sizing and we can feed back into hydrology. Quantities can be monitored all the way along for costing. And all of this in the end would feed into the, the owner operator, uh, perspective into what we call digital twin for operations. Um, and, uh, and actually the, um, what I haven't mentioned is the construct, like what, what will be covered in the next webinar, the, the whole construction stages with 4D simulations about construction sequencing. Uh, that, um, yeah, here you see the, the, the 4D construction sequencing will actually also contractors will add additional information to the models, which then in the end will feed into the, what, what will be given to the owner operator. And the, the 2D drawings uh, should be an output of the, in, a, in a true BIM or 3D or digital twin workflow. The 2D as well as data should always be a direct outcome of the models. Now on MicroStation and the my, and uh, Bentley Systems. So some people know Bentley as a car. So Bentley Systems it has nothing to do with cars. It's a software company that started in the 80s and the, the most commonly known uh, product was MicroStation and that from the outset was based around uh, infrastructure has always been a focus uh, from Bentley Systems. And uh, so MicroStation is the core engine and other, uh, other uh, tools that are, that we're talking or focusing on is, for example, OpenSight, which has the subsurface utilities model integrated. That is, um, uh, is also based on MicroStation and, and that's on the DGN format. So this, this means you can reference between open plant, the, the, uh, the civils models and open buildings, which used to be, uh, ecosim. So all of these are DGN MicroStation based and they can be referenced together. You can see them together. However, sometimes we have, um, an, an issue with the, with uh, the, the data schema when, for example, we have data schema that come from the the buildings world, IFC, and then the, um, the data schema that comes from 
uh, the plant world is different. So for that, we now promoting the digital twin idea and, and the iTwin platform that, that can bring these together. So there, I see a bit of a lag on my slides here. So this, this digital twin concept actually is, is also related to a full life cycle approach where we, we bring, we develop models from early stage conceptual approach to then the, the 3D with data enabled uh, models then through construction where they will be amended and further developed and then enter into a platform for operations which would, could be the operational digital twin and and that would be like a GIS based system we'll, we'll uh, learn more about that later uh, about a little bit about teamwork so on the model side uh, we promoting something which is a common data environment or actually Bentley is calling it connected data environment. It's the same. It's based on ISO 19650 that came out of BS 1192 from the UK. And the idea here is to bring all the models together so you can reference the models together in a cloud-based system. And um, I would say most data should come through via the models, but there's also other data in the form of spreadsheets or unstructured data that uh, we'll have to deal with in, a, in another way. And for that, I'll come back later. Uh, there, this is where the digital twin format actually comes in and goes beyond the common data environment system. Now coming to the, uh, the civil tools that uh, form part of the design of the uh, distribution or sewage network. Actually, more of a uh, focus is more on the sewage network with these. So these these uh, uh, three the three software uh, solutions here we have is Open Rail Designer, Open Roads Designer, and Open Site Designer. They're actually basically the same software, uh, just that um, and they can all do what we're presenting here today for the subsurface utilities engineering. Uh, just that the open roads and open rail have additional functionality related to uh, the um, roads or rail. But as you see here, they, they in uh, all, all three include the 3D site design that's for cut and film, a uh, storm cat, which is something to do for uh, storm uh, attenuation tanks and so on. And then the drainage and utilities also in, which is for and, and tools for survey where I hear some noise. Um, I'm not sure if, if someone is someone is. Uh, can you please mute? If I'm not sure. So anyway, uh, so so the the three D site design uh, tools are all in Open Site Designer as well as in Open Roads and Open Rail. And and what I want to highlight here is um, uh, as the core is the the open site design functionalities, subsurface utilities, engineering. And in this uh, video here, you see context capture, just to bring that in, that's the scanning of the surface. And in this video, which we see here, that's about to load. We see how the, the scanning of the surface is combined with GINT, the tool for taking boreholes and analyzing that data. And since this is a road space project, um, that is then combined with open site. And we can then use this model that takes in the, the topography surface as well as the geotechnical model. And we can use that to Actually, I'm going to switch off my camera now because it might take too much bandwidth. Um, we can take that to have an integrated approach between the geotechnical, the, the surface, and, and then use that for designing the subsurface utilities. 
So on the subsurface utilities, uh, whether that you do that in open site designer or open roads designer, um, both have this capability of um, designing all the drainage that's in and around a site. with the faults and yeah this is a view how you know a 2d drawing might look like what you see in a second because it's not yet being pushed through due to bandwidth so you basically have a 3d model of everything that you can design in 3d what's underground and therefore you can avoid clashes while you're designing and now it's coming so the, the the drawing on the right hand side shows you a 2d representation that's often hard to read because you have a lot of overlaying and uh, and uh, utilities in the ground that are nearby when we work in a 3D environment we can whilst we're designing do clash detection and then detect problems and uh, we we can also like uh, this actually works in conjunction with the the hydrology calculation we'll talk about later but here basically you can design in 3d uh, all the the subsurface utilities and later we see how that can be combined with the um, hydrology calculations Part of this or uh, what our customers find useful. So here's an example that has been used in Hong Kong, for example, on, in, in the Chatin area. If anyone is aware, uh, near, near where the horse race is in Chatin, uh, there's a large water treatment plant and they designed the, the sewage network around there and used this library that has a, a, a 3D aspect and the 2D that would come through into the drawings. And, and these components, um, there, there's libraries available that are general that we can provide, but you can also create specific libraries and they've done that for Hong Kong, for example. So any of generic uh, models and, and associated drawing output that comes from the models can be created. Like here, a few examples of that. And yeah, this is a few examples how this might look. And yeah, just to highlight, this is about preventing clashes. You have all the components there that can be um, put together like in a Lego type system, but digital. And then uh, later we can also compare the design to to the S build, and that would then feed uh, feed through into the operations and maintenance model. Um, yeah, and here here you see a sort of JS type view of that of another example in in Hong Kong. So this also integrates with, with the GIS systems. Yeah, here another example, and. Uh, yeah, and and uh, I have a lot of examples from Hong Kong because my colleague Jimmy, uh, he, he's quite an expert in this field in the area and he's he's based in Hong Kong. So he provided me with that material. Uh, here, this is an uh, example of the Hong Kong Macau Bridge where they use that for quite large, this large artificial island is quite an extensive network of underground utilities that was all modeled in the subsurface utilities and I think I've reached this sort of time limit and would now hand over at this point to my colleague Kartik. Kartik, are you ready to push your video actually I see the uh, the audience is still seeing the um, the Hong Kong boundary facility okay that was my 20 minutes um, okay I'm now gonna hand over to my colleague Kartik who's gonna explain about the hydrology thank you Dominic 
as we see the water and the wastewater sectors are rather broad uh, with the treatment plants on one side and the hydraulic network on the other. In this, in this part, we focus on the solution of a, where uh, we do the hydraulic network part, uh, whether it's for water distribution or wastewater collection system or a stormwater conveyance systems. Now we come back to the earlier slide, uh, which was illustrated earlier. And with regards to the integrated water and wastewater life cycle, we will see how the hydraulics and hydrology part fits in with other workflow processes. Now let us see what is a hydraulic network model. A hydraulic network model is a virtual representation of a real water or a base water system. First and foremost, it enables engineers to evaluate the design of a system before it is even built, identifying the optimal operations and maintenance and renewal strategies. And it also involves planning for the long haul so that the expansion and rehabilitation decisions are taken into account for future population growth. Next, we are going to see an overview of Bentley's hydraulic and hydrology solutions called open flows, its common features and how it fits into the water wastewater life cycle. Put in more simpler terms, what exactly are open flow solutions to? It is hydraulic and hydrological analysis of pressure pipes, gravity mains, open channels and connected by node elements such as water junctions or it could be manholes, it could be catch basins, it could be pumps, it could be valves, it could be reservoirs, tanks, etc. Now we look at a typical or a basic illustration on what is the workflow that will be a part of a hydraulic and hydrology modeling. Here I've taken an example of a wastewater or a stormwater system, like what data you require first and what data you get as output. First, you build your network, though this is a sanitary network. For an outfall, you enter your boundary conditions. And for the pipes and nodes, it has its own input parameters, such as ground elevations, invert elevations, loading demands. And for the pipes, again, it's length, Obviously, Manning's coefficient uh, size can be an input, uh, but we will come to the later how size can also be an output. And then if it's going to be a stormwater system, you have your catchment areas and along with other hydrological parameters such as rainfall data, runoff data, runoff coefficients, time of concentration, etc. Then you run your hydraulic and hydrology analysis here, basically the simulation. And then you get uh, your hydraulic outputs. It could be depth, it could be pressure, velocity, hydraulic grade lines, surcharging or flooding, etc. Now our solutions also offer pipe sizing as an output, uh, which is basically automated design based on certain constraints. This we are going to see later. Now the sizes of sizes based on these hydraulic analysis actually form the foundation with the or integrated uh, road or site design for the civil structures. And this we saw earlier in earlier part of this webinar. Now let us look at some of the common features or overview of our open flows, hydraulic and hydrology solutions. Now these features are common to whether it's going to be a water distribution or a storm or a sewer network. All are multi-platform and it has excellent uh, GIS integration. All solutions offer critical tools to build models very quickly and efficiently. And it also can manage different options and conditions through our scenario management feature. It is capable of automated designs of network. Also, in other words, in other words it's known as pipe sizing uh, based on the hydraulics. It also has excellent 
communication and uh, reporting tools in the forms of graphs, engineering profiles, reports, etc. First, our, out, our open flow solutions are multi-platform, which means that it integrates with AutoCAD, ArcGIS, and other Bentley civil solutions. Um, we also have the standard default standalone. And we saw the earlier part of this presentation are how our open flow solutions plug into open site designer or open roads designer. And this is our part of the civil suite of applications. Now, one of the critical steps is to build the network model itself. And this is typically over a very large geographical area and perhaps creating a model geometry of thousands of pipe network. For that, a tool called Model Builder comes into play in building models from existing data and which could leverage any data source. Three forms of data source are used, namely CAD drawings, or spreadsheets, and GIS shape files. Another important part of uh, hydraulics and hydrology modeling is entering ground levels. This is one of the important parameters you need, whether it's going to be a water or wastewater or stormwater. You need these value regardless. For that, instead of entering elevations manually, you can extract elevations automatically from a feature called T-Rex, uh, like from existing uh, elevation sources, like contours, land XML files, survey spot elevations, etc. Next is the assigning load for sanitary system or demands for a water dis distribution system. In that regards, open flow solutions help us doing that in a variety of ways using a tool called Load Builder. Here you might have your loading or demand in the form of uh, house connections, or laterals, uh, flow area polygons, uh, population polygons, uh, land use polygons. We will now see how we do this entire model building process in an airport expansion project. Now what you see on the screen is open flow sewer gems in a micro station integrated platform, which is basically a 2D environment. Here you have an uh, airport expansion project. At the bottom right, you see the new airport. And uh, the idea is to right now bring in new sewer lines into the project. Uh, on the right, you see the conduit table all, all blank. Uh, so right now, there are no hydraulic elements. Uh, in a moment, you'll see the table as well, which is also blank. Here you see the table, which is blank. So the idea is to bring in uh, the proposed lines. So you for that, you open model builder so you can build models from any source so in this case i'm going to build it from uh s3 shape files so this is someone who's already kind of drawn a proposed network so the source of this uh it's an s3 shape file format so we browse to that uh set of files so that will be like a conduit shape file uh you know, pressure pipe shape file, pump shape file, manual shape file, etc. So each has its own shape files, and you see the attributes of the shape file, like a preview. What are the attributes available for each element, element type? And we are going to build this into the uh, airport scheme. Uh, so uh, you have to make sure everything all is geographically referenced correctly. So here you see the uh, the. The units, you need to specify whatever units, whether it's feet or meters, uh, also some connection parameters, uh, such as like if there are issues in the original data, like in the shape files, some correction issues, it, uh, it can also correct that. Uh, the model builder has the ability to do that. Um, so also there are other, some connection parameters. Normally you leave this uh, it, like default mode. Uh, when you're doing that for the first time. And the next thing is, main thing is to uh, map each one. So you have the conduit on the left table, which is the shape file, and you map it to the conduit of the sewer gems. So similarly, you go for each element. And on the bottom right, you match the attributes, which is the diameter mapping to the diameter. 
and you set up your units again inverts matching to the start invert stop invert matching to the stop invert so on and so forth now you build the model uh, it just takes a few seconds and uh, you see the entire model build, build being built very quickly uh, you see the pink lines out there out there uh, with the uh, Condit 172 and manual 170. So that's the new sewer lines that has just been brought in, new sanitary lines. Um, you also see the table that's been filled up now on the right. Uh, and the next thing you will be uh, seeing is uh, assigning load. So here you have a bunch of house connections or sanitary house connections. So we need to assign loads from the houses to the manholes. So manually you can do that one by one which is going to probably take a lot of time. Uh, alternatively, you can also uh, use something called uh, the load builder where you need to do a connection from the house to the manhole. Um, so that is a more automated way of doing it, which is going to save a lot of time uh, doing that. So now you open load builder and you see the different uh, load building options you have, which we already saw the point load method, area load method, um, population or land use based methods. So there are different uh, methods to do it uh, and also the property connector uh, load method. So here we are going to use the uh, property connector load data. So that's the the one that's currently there. Uh, so we are going to use that to assign loads automatically. Uh, and if, once you do that, you will see a orange connection between the houses uh, based on the nearest uh, location. So the orange will be a connection between the house and the uh, the manholes. So you see the uh, results preview, like which is the nearest one. And you once you once you synchronize the, the entire process, uh, you see the connections now. So you see the orange lines now connecting from the houses to the. So now all the loads have been uh, assigned to the manholes. Uh, the next process you will be need to do is uh, okay. You have brought the. Uh, uh, lines, you have built the model, you have assigned the loads. Now you need to do a design. So all the loading has been done. So now you're going to do an automated design. Okay, this is in a 2D uh, sewer gems integrated with MicroStation. Uh, you have loaded the base map uh, with aerial imagery and other uh, information. Um, you can switch, and switch on and switch off the base map layers. So the idea is to do a design of uh, this. Uh, so for that, we have some specific design parameters, uh, basically what we call as uh, constraint-based design. So in a moment, I'm going to show you what are the different constraints. Uh, so first, we go to the alternatives here and look at uh, the design alternatives that have been set up. So you have the velocity, cover, slope, uh, tractive stress, uh, and you see a minimum value, maximum value for each of them. So based on these minimum and maximum values for all these parameters, uh, you kind of do a design. Uh, similarly, there is also part full, uh, you know, 100% full, 70% full, which is the flow. Um, so it's all completely hydraulic based. Uh, so you're basically doing a design here uh, for the gravity pipe. And uh, for the node, again, you will have something uh, like matching the inverts and matching or matching the uh, crown. So you can do either either one. So here it's matching the invert here. And you can also do a specific design, like you, you don't have to design a conduit uh, structure or you, you can. So here you have the, the entire conduit table. Initially, the, it is all set up to eight inches. All the pipes are eight inches, which is like the initial uh, setting. Uh, then we'll do a design now, automated design. Uh, that just takes a few seconds. So yeah, so that's it. So it's just take a few seconds and now you see some violations might be there, but uh, uh, some are okay. So now you see the, uh, also see the table now, which is design table and you see the, uh, it's all 10 inches now. Okay. Um, so it's been designed from eight inches to 10 inches based on the hydraulics and hydrology. Okay. Uh, once you do that, now we can also look at the uh, profiles. So you see the hydraulic profile where the blue uh, line is the HGL, the hydraulic grade line, and the green is the ground level. And you see the uh, entire sewer profile of a particular stretch. And this is based on a peak flow value. And you will also see the uh, 
what you call the, the engineering profile. So this is a hydraulic profile. Uh, this uh, profile is just for for hydraulic purposes, but you want to actually say export it to a, a you know CAD drawing or something like that. You, you need an engineering profile, something like this. Okay, so all this has been designed now. Um, now this is all in 2D. Uh, so the next thing we are going to see this is basically a similar process. The entire hydraulic and analysis can be actually done in a, a 3D environment uh, where it is again integrated in a with uh, open site designer or open roads designer. So in this case, it's an open uh, open site designer where you can place uh, elements. Uh, there we build model through the model builder here. You're placing uh, elements one by one. Uh, also manually and you can compute the uh, hydraulics of the invert which is basically nothing but hydrology uh, and you see the values the inlet summary the capture efficiency etc all the hydraulic parameters um, next you see also you can also look at the pond uh, there the, 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 that's the pond which is in the 3d view on the right and uh, 2d view on the left so you see the same pond now you will look at uh, some of the uh, properties the head walls, uh, so here you see the chamber hydraulic properties of the chamber. Uh, then the pipes that are connecting to it, the, it's now it's 150 mm PVC pipes. There is no flow initially. So we'll do the same automated design that we just saw in earlier in the 2D environment in the 3D environment now based on a peak flow analysis of the hydraulic network. So we're doing a design. So we're going to compute the scenario, this particular scenario. And obviously, it's going to modify the uh, hydraulic uh, parameters. Okay. So you see the conduit flow, the AGL, the depth, etc. All this being, it's been uh, computed. Now we're going to also see the what is the new sizes. The 3D model is also updated with the new pipe sizes. Now it's going to be a 300 mm PVC pipe. So that's how the same thing can be done, you know, in an integrated uh, 3D environment with Open Roads Designer or Open Site Center. Um, now we can also look at the profile of the same thing which we saw in 2D. So you see the hydraulic, same hydraulic profile which we saw in 2D. Here it's it's there available in 3D as well. Now we'll also do a model cross section, which is more detailed civil design kind of a thing. So you'll see the civil design part, like you see the, uh, that's the conduit on the left. Uh, and then you have to see the gutter. Uh, then you see the roadway or the path uh, or the parking lot. You see the structure there and that cross section has been visualized here. You also also see the time-based simulation uh, of this network, which is Obviously, based on time, a particular 24 hours or 10 hours, or what, whatever may be the case, uh, you can see the the time-based profile now. As you browse through the player, uh, you see the HGL going up and down uh, based on the rainfall data. You'll also see the pond uh, quickly, review pond performance, how the pond is acting. You'll see the pond is flooding at, at a particular point. At uh, the flat line says it's it's pond plant is flooding. Next, we will be looking at the digital I twin technology. Yes, yeah, thank you, Kartik. Um, we now do a bit of a jump from something that was more like quite technical to. Uh, uh, I just want to give a bit of an overview on the. Uh, Digital Twins idea and then PlantSight is the tool that Bentley has uh, specifically for uh, water, wastewater and other plant solutions, oil and gas as well. So um, the I, I'd, I'd like to tell the story like we had CAT first like in the 80s, then BIM came in the late 90s, noughties where I also moved from CAD to BIM, and that was the latest. And now I see another shift like that to Digital Twin. And I had lots of, there's a lot of debate around this because it's new. And people asking, is Digital Twin replacing BIM and CAD? And the answer to that is, I think, a consensus we found that no, the Digital Twin actually collects everything. Today we've seen some part of the design being done in 2D and then uh, later combined with a 3D. So in a similar way, the digital twin 
is should uh, catch, capture all the data which is coming from a, a 2D data or, or 3D BIM environment. And also, if you have buildings coming in or maybe a car park with a retention pond and there could be a railway, and these might all have different data schema. And on large projects, they're often not all done or almost never done in just one vendor software. So the digital twin idea is also to bring in not only BIM format from different platforms, which could be like OpenRail or Revit or, or AutoCAD from the 2D. It can all come in. We can scan bits that we don't know about, which is just there in the environment. We can use scanning, like I've showed before, the, the context capture. And um, yeah, so, so a key thing here that uh, this iTwin the digital twin solution from Bentley is the iTwin as, as the umbrella and, and that, uh, and is, a, is on an open, is on GitHub, is open source, uh, scripting. So we can build and we have already built connectors into like Revit and, and, uh, IFC and some of the other formats. But there is no theoretical limit what you can build a connector too and we're looking as this is actually ongoing so we're also looking into connecting to things like erp software and other things but but that some of that is still uh, uh, about to come to be fully matured continuing with uh, digital twin technology we are going to briefly give you an insight of an uh, operational software tool Basically, it's one key component of the digital twin for water infrastructure. But before the solution overview, we will see how we can extend the digital twin concept to a creation of an under, underground water system. This actually involves integrating virtual engineering or uh, hydraulic network models uh, along with the city scale reality models and GIS data, and then continuously updating the digital envi environment with operational data from SCADA systems and other telemetry, including like sensors, meters, and any other measured sources. This creates a real-time representation that can be used in operations. A digital twin continuously and dynamically changes based on the data it receives, allowing it to mature and yield valuable information that it isn't generated by a traditional static hydraulic model. And that capability can drive business decisions. We saw the open flows network solutions earlier for hydraulics and hydrology or the engineering analysis. Now this is where water site fits into the picture where it can provide operational aspect of the digital twin for water infrastructure. Other solutions such as sewer site and flood early warning systems are upcoming releases that will complete the digital twin for water or wastewater life, uh, life cycle infrastructure. Water site uh, or open flows water site has direct integration with open flows water gems. It is a web solution that provides operational support and provides alerts for proactive maintenance of your water infrastructure. Before we see a small demonstration of the solution, we will briefly look at the overview of the solution and its capabilities. Some of the aspects that are essential with operational support to a water system are network monitoring, pump and tank performances, water auditing, and uh, getting non-revenue water, which is NRW, emergency response, and among others. You will now see this in action. OpenFlow's water site is a, a web-based solution. Here you see the dashboard, the main dashboard of, the, of a particular model. You see also it in a map format uh, with with all the information that's there, each sensors, click on each sensors and see what, what the forecast up to a week, or you can go back in time history and look at what uh, what anomalies have happened. So go, you can also go zone by zone, uh, look at each zone, the values, uh, the information for each zone. You can search for a particular zone 
and, and look only for that particular zone and look at the minimum night flow uh, for a for a particular zone uh, also look at the flow balances uh, how much volume is flowing in flowing out flowing compare per pump performances over time uh, analyze tank levels if that's in real time or historical compare measurements between the tanks the tank turnovers all this information can be uh, there look at alerts and then the non revenue water uh, understand each component of non revenue water what are the real losses apparent losses the leakage losses and compare the leakage levels now this is an integrated view of the system where you can look go to each individual pipe and look what's the values the hydraulic values whether it's hgl or pressure etc now this is an emergency pipe response simulation where you can identify if there is going to be a break what you can do you can save that as an event as well and this is the final administration page of your water site uh, software this concludes our part 2 of the webinar series on water wastewater infrastructure life cycle thank you yeah thank you kartik and um before we uh, go into um the Q&A session i wanted to or we wanted to uh, have a little survey if you don't mind uh, just to give you uh, give us a better understanding where our audience is is at at this moment and uh, yeah so we hope we can then you know better get a better understanding uh, how how we can assist you so if you could please uh, if you don't mind it's it's no obligation but it'd be great uh, is is anonymous so if you we we not going to call anyone out here so it's a 2d cat or 3d cat or or bim or, or other intelligent 3d and by that i mean you know solutions like open site or Uh, or other competitors similar solutions that are not bim but function in a similar way for the civil world there's actually always a debate whether we can call that bim or not i i generally say it's bim for infrastructure um intelligent pnid is is uh, something uh for more for the process plant and uh, common data environment or digital twin technology if if you're using any of that that would be great if you could submit click one of them or none or or I think multiple is also possible and submit and yeah so here we see the result um which shows that there is a, actually a, yeah it looks like most people are in the 2d or 3d cad world and it's yeah that's more than half here and and another good chunk in the bim world pin id a few and and digital twin a few cde i don't see anyone here um okay so uh sorry another another poll that's like a compulsory thing to do um they yeah, are following a company protocol if you could answer that as well if you don't mind and this is about the question whether you would like to be um contacted by a bentley systems sales representative yes or no and this is meant to stay up for 10 seconds which i think we almost reached now and um yeah i think we can now open the the q and a session so if you haven't put in anything you can now have the opportunity um There was one question oh how long is the webinar running actually it's running another 10 minutes so we have another 10 minutes for Q&A which was uh, we quite good exactly on plan
um, requests to share a slide presentation and to provide e-certificate for PDH and um, CPD claim point for professional. I think this is about the um, the uh, learning certificate, right? So I think we'll answer that separately and focus now more on unless Kartik, do you think that's a technical question? Pro probably not. Um, no, no. Um, yeah. <clears throat> so one is just a firm if I'm an urban, urban planner. I think Bentley software is very useful because it can integrate many uh, data as master planning with infrastructure design operation and maintaining the 3d model so that's thank you very much and that's just affirmative and yeah whilst uh, like please feel free to type in um, some more technical question um, I, I would uh, maybe ask Kartik one thing, um, which I've, I hear often uh, being asked, and I think today we integrate, we, we already showed this, but it's the question about the um, SUE, the subsurface utility engineering model in um, open site designer and the open flows hydrology. And I think a key, key question here I would like to come back to is, um, how is the workflow? And I asked Kartik, uh, you know, to clarify on that before. And how I see it is the workflow is we design first an open flow, something like the the first at the first go, the the requirements of sizing and uh, for the pipes and attenuation ponds and so on. And then when we have the that can then plug in in into the open site, right? And from the open site we can then. Uh, integrate and this is a two-way then we can have a two-way direction right and uh, whilst the flow is first we use open flows for the sizing then we model it in real in the real model we might find there's a pre-existing condition that means one pipe can maybe not be exactly in the location as we thought then we need to change it in the model and at that point i can push back into the open flows and this is a bi-directional process is, is that correct Kartik? Yeah, that's uh, that's exactly right. And uh, typically, uh, you you do have uh, other utilities as well. Just not uh, water. It could be even say gas or something like that, or other storm water. You, we might be doing sanitary, but storm water, existing storm water system might be there or something, or existing water system. So it's like a com combined uh, thing. So that's why you have the SUV and. Uh, so you have the hydraulics as well to compute the storm water or the sanitary flow. Uh, if the water is not there, the water hydraulics is not going to be there in the SUV. But you can always do that in open flows water germs and bring it in. Um, so that, that's how the workflow is. Like just like you said, you go back and forth, two way, uh, two way communication and two way pilot basically integration, and then uh, and then you go from there. Uh, plus you also have the now with the uh, open site or open roads you have the uh, the site design the civil design basically the quantities and the road uh, the planning and everything everything that comes into play now okay we we have another thank you Karthik. we have another question here that i find interesting can we use water gems for the hydraulics inside a water or wastewater treatment plant or water gems is just for the distribution network pipes I think it's primarily for the distribution, but of course, uh, when we talk about the uh, uh, water uh, process treat, uh, treatment plant, there is these uh, pipes come in, right? And uh, and we have the outflow into the sea, or uh, so. So when we divide no, the, uh, yeah, no, or? we can't actually we can't use uh, water gems inside a treatment plant. The reason being is. Uh, there is a lot of changes, biochemical process, change of state, etc. So water gems uh, only up is typically uh, water gems or sewer gems only applies to um, Newtonian fluids, no change of state. Uh, so so that's the reason why you can't use it inside a plant. 
after plant uh, treatment plant in water gems is a is a node element so it's a tank or a, or a storage reservoir right that's it there is no other uh, thing there so you can't use it inside a treatment plant for uh, all the chemical or biochemical or any other processes so but, but however like if you if you see a water treatment plant and if you define what's inside the fence what's outside the fence right so i've discussed this recently and inside the fence is the water treatment plant but you have your main sewer coming in right so some part of the network is going to be hello i lost you sorry i i didn't Can't hear say. anything last part i didn't hear uh, so just just to say that the water network is coming into the site of the water treatment plant so yes, that's it's it. not part you, of you can't do anything yeah, yeah it's it, that's it that's it that so the treatment plant will be like a tank or a storage or reservoir mm. that's it yeah so <laughs> it has its levels and stuff like if, that if, it's just if you the contractor and your task is to deal with the water treatment plant uh, you will have to deal with the incoming sewer and the outflow at, as well right so i'm, yeah. I'm just saying if uh, if that's the project you know like like large in singapore we have the large uh, water treatment plant projects and the the civil works around it are part of the contract um you know yeah, so yeah that you you take out to like plants uh, open plant or something like that so based on that no hydraulics yeah. is involved just open plant the, the structure of it and everything that so yeah 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 it's just this def- how, how do you define what is where and uh i, I had this discussion with uh, our american colleagues the other day and they said inside the fence outside the fence meaning inside the fence of the water treatment plant there's one thing and outside is another and then i thought hold on but the sewer is actually coming inside the fence but it's still the the scope of of the civil hydrology team which is different to the process plant engineers right the, but they have to be aware of each other you know that that was my point i guess right yeah be- because yeah. the the uh, whoever is dealing with the process treatment plant needs to know what is coming in right and where at what level and the quantity and all that right yeah so yeah this yeah. it's a very simple actually as long as it's water it's okay <laughs> if the even if the sewer pipes go into the go into the treatment plant as long as it's water it's fine but once it goes through the chemical and all these processes then it's a totally different ball game after that once whatever whatever happens in the treatment plant then it comes back as water for the uh, you know the outflow so this term from there it's okay so what exactly happens inside the treatment plant that's where water gems or sewer gems doesn't deal with it okay i think all okay, the chemical all the key. all the treat, treating the treating process right so that 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 is not dealt by water gems or sewer gems that water treatment part is not dealt yeah which yeah, which is I, I the actually is, and yeah which which was last week's uh, subject uh, on uh, with patrick on the on the open plant designer so we explained the the water treatment plant and how that works and yeah thank you for clarifying that there is a very clear distinction yeah, yeah. so if you if you're interested in that and you've missed last week's because we had a glitch uh, uh actually on on that on the linkedin i posted the new link for the recording if you can't find it just email me or ping me on linkedin uh do bentley have integration with cat and bentley in concepts that in master planning integration with cat uh yes so if you're talking about microstation there is a very close uh uh workflow uh, at D- if if you're talking dwg cat that format so microstation can open that there is no complicated conversion process so microstation can work with auto autocad dwg format that's one thing and then from there we take it further and um a concept set in master planning kartik um uh, master planning concept so i'm not quite sure what like so for master planning 
there's different things to it. So one, one thing is the terrain, which is open site that I've showed earlier, that that's uh, dealing with, with the surface and cut and fill and that design that that's our, um, software for that master planning. In other words, we have open cities and that's a GIS tool, which basically takes what comes out of maps, out of scanning, out of data. And that's like a GIS type system for urban planning. If that answers the question. Kartik, do that's, you that's correct. Yeah, yeah, this? yeah, right. Yeah. You, you have master planning for every, everything, you know, for whether it's going to be cities or uh, then that that's a m one type of master planning. So you have um, open cities map for that or reality model, whatever. And then you have master planning for even roads, uh, just general roads. Then you have ORD here, you know, or, or then you have to do a site plan. And then you have open site design and you have a master plan for even for water. So you can use, mm -hmm. you know, open flows as well so you know that depends on what type of master planning you're doing i think the main message here is that the all civil tools integrate with that gis right 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 so open roads open site as well as your hydrology modules they all can connect to open cities planner gis compatible right yeah Okay, now they said thank you, and we are actually two minutes over the time. So thank you very much. If if any more questions, feel free to ping us on LinkedIn or email, and we'll answer any further questions. And yeah, and uh, and next week we'll talk about the construction stages and contractor specific software synchro uh, in one week's time. And we try to address that uh, around, you know, what, what is relevant in the construction of a water treatment plant or, or anything around. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you, Kartik. Anything else to say? Thank you. That's it. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you all. Bye.